What is up my YouTube friends? So today we're gonna to be talking about Tmux and Vim. Lately I've been getting really into developer workflows and productivity. So I'm gonna show you all the research that I did so that you can copy my configurations for both Tmux and Vim and give you an idea of what these tools are and why you might wanna investigate them. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so we're at the terminal. What I use personally is iTerm. And so like iTerm right here. We're gonna use that. I have the Starship prompt uh, installed. And you know, before we jump into this, all these links are gonna be in the description. I'm gonna put a GitHub link to my dot files in the description as well. Check them out below. And while you're on your way there, hit that subscribe button. And if you find value in the video, hit that like button too. So let's move on and talk about these things called dot files in your home directory. Typically, if you do like an ls-la, you'll see all these files that have a dot prefix. By default, those don't show up. They just have all this, you know, folders and top level things. But if you do that la option here, then you'll see all these other options that are installed. Let's crack open the way that you would configure your tmux, uh, which is, a terminal multiplexer and this lets you open up a ton of different windows and do keyboard shortcuts so essentially you don't have to touch your mouse and you can navigate and open up windows and navigate between those windows with ease and if you configure it a certain way then you don't ever have to leave your home row so what that means is you know whenever you're on the asdf row with both hands you stay on that row and you aren't having to like move your hands around on the arrow keys or on the function keys or move your hand completely off the keyboard onto the mouse and click around. So helps with productivity, it's it's known to help with that. The way to configure Tmux, which again is the terminal multiplexer, is with this .tmux.conf. Before you install Tmux, uh, you, you probably won't have this. Uh, for me to install Tmux, I just use Homebrew for mostly everything. Homebrew uh, or like a brew install Tmux will get you off the ground and then you can create this file. And so let's open this up and you can see there's a few options here. So I have a mouse, like letting the mouse on. Uh, and then there's this plugin manager and I'll post a link to this. Like there's a, a workflow to allow plugins for Tmux. And so you have to have the plugin manager here. I really like this color scheme. It's uh, Arctic Studio or Arctic Ice Studio. It's got like a nice blue thing on the bottom whenever you're in a, your Tmux session. And then just a couple of performance things. So like, you know, there's usually a little bit of a delay whenever you execute things in Tmux and this eliminates that. Also Tmux sets your windows and your panes based on zero. Again, in, in an effort to streamline productivity, I don't wanna go all the way over to zero and then come back to one. I want like one, two, three, four to be on my left and be really easy to configure. So I changed both of those so that they show up and we'll see that here in a minute. All right, so that's the Tmux conf. So let's open up a Tmux session. You can do this using Tmux new session, I believe. So if you do this, opens up Tmux, you can see, you know, it looks like your normal prompt. You can print the working directory. You can go to you know, like, I think I have like a code and side projects directory. So we could go in here and, and check stuff out. Another thing that I have installed is called FCF and I have it installed in two different ways. I have it installed in Vim and also in the command line. The way I have it installed in the command line, again, is like a brew install. We have this other dot file because I'm using the Z shell prompt. To configure all these things, you use these dot files. And so open up our Z shell. If I go all the way down on the bottom, you can see uh, we have Starship, which is the prompt that I'm using. And then FCF here at the bottom is the config that sets up using rip grep for better searching where it'll by default ignore any like get ignored files, which is really nice. This thing is also super performant. It's nice to be able to search through stuff. We're in Vim here, opening up our Z shell RC. You know, these are some of the Tmux aliases that I have set up. If we wanted to attach to a session, then we use this TA command and we can give it a name. What we did a minute ago was this one, which is Tmux new session, and we didn't give it a name. Uh, you can see at the bottom of the screen, the 
very, very bottom that there is the blue like vim and we can change this like if we wanted to do like our prefix command which by default is control b and do a dollar sign then we can rename this session to say uh youtube and it'll rename it to this bottom thing right here youtube and if we exit out of here so let's colon q out of vim and we do a tmux detach then we're back here, and again, the nice thing about tmux is that we can do a tmux list sessions. And we can see that session back over here. We can rejoin it with our alias, the TA alias, and say attach to YouTube. And we're back here, back where we started and left off. And the other thing with Tmux is you can have somebody else actually connect to your machine and work alongside with you. You wanna share code, you wanna do some pair programming. This is the way that you can allow that to happen. This is a great way and with really low latency to, to enable that functionality. All right, so I've jumped around a little bit. We've talked about our Tmux config. We've talked about Z shell RC. So, so that's how you can set aliases, what things are loaded whenever you load in a new a new terminal session and let's talk about our vim config now so i'm going to get out of tmux and clear the window and then we'll go up here to our vim rc and this is again another dot file this is how you configure your vim editor which is vi improved and so this editor lets you do a lot of really cool things there's a difference between vim the motions and vim the editor right here we're looking at vim the editor but there's also a bunch of motions that allow you to jump around to different parts of a file using typically the, you know, H, J, K, and L keys. You know, that lets you modify files really quickly, jump to different places. So like if I wanted to go to line 24, then I can jump here and I'm already at line 24. Uh, you can see a little bit of the config here where if I move my cursor, the line number is right there where my cursor is, but I have relative line numbers. So if I wanted to jump up to where I'm setting the relative line numbers, then I could do 15 and K and I'm up here on the, the, this line right here. This first thing sets line numbers. This sets the relative line numbers the encoding to UTF-8, so I don't have any crazy characters. What I use is Vim plug. And again, I'll put this in the description where you can install this. Use this so you can install Vim plugins and get a bunch of different functionality. So this first one is COC, which is command of config, I believe. And that lets you have auto completion and a lot of help using a language server. This is how you get a lot of the functionality that you have by default in something like Visual Studio Code or IntelliJ. I have, you know, worked this so that if you're in TypeScript, then you have a pretty good experience, but I'm still trying to work on having a better experience using Kotlin. I'm actually gonna try NeoVim instead of Vim to try and get that experience because I haven't quite achieved it. Uh, stay tuned and subscribe if you're interested in a video about that because I am going to be exploring NeoVim a little bit more. So we'll configure that with our language server. That's what the COC is. There's also down here, we go way down here at the bottom. There's this commented section. So COC config and all of this information is all the COC config. I just grabbed this from their GitHub page, all their documentation. I haven't really gone through it in, in earnest yet. Check it out on your own and let me know if you have any problems installing it or setting it up. All right, let's go back. We hit GG, we're going back to the top. We can go back through our plugins. So FCF is your fuzzy search. So if you do, um, I think it's files. Then it'll open up this little editor and you can do fuzzy searches. So like if I wanted to say, I want, you know, on my side projects, I want the trivia app. Oh, well, it's not done indexing everything yet. So it's gotta get, there we go. You can see it's doing a fuzzy match. I can actually use control K to move up and control J to move down, which is nice. So I'm staying on the home row. And if I wanted to open this up in a split, then I would do control V, I believe. Yeah. And so I have two editors open at the same time and I can switch between them using a different plugin, which is right here. This Vim Tmux Navigator. 
And that lets me do control H and L for left and right to swap between these different windows instead of having to memorize yet another leader key, which is kind of the prefix thing, like we talked about with Tmux, where you have to hit some command and then you're able to execute something in an editor. By default for Vim, it is backward slash. And so like this line 15 here, this one is gonna be a backward slash and F. And that one allows us to do RG. So that one might be a little broken right now. I'll have to investigate that. But if we do RG, then this does search on text. So if I had something about an application that I wanted to search, then it'll show up here every place that has application in the name. So we've talked a little bit about FCF and how to search for things. This one's dev icons. So if I open up using control in, this is nerd tree. And again, Vim editing. So J and K up and down. And you can see some of these icons where it's like JavaScript or JSON or uh, this Heroku file. All of these come from uh, Vim dev icons. You'll need to install a nerd icon. So the one that I have on this machine is, if I say preferences and text under profiles, then I'm using this uh, for a code nerd font. I tried the JetBrains one, but the, this one just worked a lot better. That's the one I would recommend. And then while we're in here, I configured this to where it would send plus plus whenever I hit command forward slash. And that's just so I can map for this other plugin, which is, here I'll close this nerd tree editor. We'll jump over here. And that one is the configuration for this nerd commenter plugin, which is up here. So to get this functionality to work, we need to set, you know, how to toggle nerd commenter. And I don't want to type out nerd commenter toggle every time. So I mapped that to a command forward slash to where if we had a few things, command forward slash, we comment them out, U to undo, and we're back where we started. Uh, we saw a nerd tree, this git gutter, this actually shows if we had a file that was modified, let's just create a new line here. So you can see on the left hand side, there's a few plus signs. So that's what that git gutter does is it adds, if I delete a line, then it'll show a little squiggle. So it shows me based on git, what has changed similar to how you have it on VS code. We're kind of mirroring a lot of functionality on VS code at the moment. Then we have a uh, syntax highlighting. So this is showing in the, the nerd tree whenever I have something that's modified. This one is a TypeScript syntax highlighter. And then we have nerd tree and Vim airline. This is how to get the bottom part of the screen where it shows, you know, normal and it shows what mode we're in. So right now we're in normal mode. We can insert, then it'll show that. Or if we're in visual mode, it'll show that. Or if we're in visual block mode, it'll show that as well. So that's how you get that. And then again, I'm playing around with how to do Kotlin and Vim. I haven't quite found a great workflow, so stay tuned on that. This is for rip grep, and then I just ignored the node modules. Uh, I saw somebody else do this. I'm pretty sure it was like Ben Awad. That is what I grabbed from him. These are just some other config options. This, where it's setting to use regular expressions, I was having some performance issues, and so set this one so that you don't run into those like I did. You just set that one to zero. And then this one is for, this is control P to map a keyboard shortcut. And that one is so we can open up FCF. So that's, that is a, this window right here that we're opening up where you would search for files. And we talked about the other one. Uh, and then this is to open up nerd tree and have it stay open and also have it to where it'll open up wherever the file is. So you can see I'm modifying the vimrc and I want it to open up in that directory, not open up in, you know, the root location every time because that's annoying. So if I open this file up, you can see it opens up in the right directory. We're looking at a readme. We will close nerd tree, delete those extra things because I don't want them. And then we can quit out of that. I think that's about it. Again, subscribe, like the video if you found this interesting. I've been nerding out on 
getting developer productivity set up. I'll post another video with my experience with NeoVim, and then I'll have some more videos for Kotlin and Ruby, and we'll go from there. Thanks, everybody.